want to go keto, but don't feel like going keto because you think you can't ever get your drink on? Think again, my friend. I'm here to tell you about keto and alcohol, and trust me, the news is good. Listen in to learn everything you need to know about drinking adult cocktails on keto. Hey everybody, welcome back. Kelly Alexi here, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. As you know, the subject of today is keto and alcohol. And it was just a little over a year ago that I converted to keto, <laughs> ketoism. <laughs> no, I went keto about a year ago and it absolutely changed my life. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds and kept it off. It has completely, not only helped me lose weight, it has transformed my life. Um, you can check out my playlist for, for keto. I'll hook it up at the end of this video. But I mean, it has changed my hunger. It has changed my appetite. It has changed my relationship with food. It has really transformed my life. It has been such a wonderful experience. And I am very excited to talk to you today about alcohol because I enjoy a really nice adult beverage. And I think one of the biggest misunderstandings and hesitations that people have about going keto is thinking that they can't drink or thinking that there's nothing good as far as an adult cocktail to have when you go keto. That's absolutely not true. And I am going to share with you how I have been able to <laughs> at the risk of sounding like an alcoholic, I've been able to drink every single week while I'm on keto and effortlessly lose weight and keep it off. So stay tuned, we're gonna dive right in and start drinking. All right, you guys, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed while you are here. Also hit that cute little bell so that you're notified whenever we put new content out. You know you wanna be in the know, don't you? All right, everybody, let's talk about day drinking. I mean, let's just talk about drinking in general. So like I said at the beginning of the show, alcohol is one of the, definitely one of the most misunderstood uh, topics as far as keto goes. In fact, whenever people see me posting on Instagram um, or Facebook that I'm out and I, they see me post, you know, a martini or a wine, they're like, wait, I thought you were keto. And I'm like, I am keto. And they just seem to think that you can't drink if you're, if you're keto. Um, you definitely have to make choices and you have to be careful. And I learned very early on, there are some things that will surprise you when you're out at a restaurant. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this right up front. Like one of the things I learned early on, um, because I'm so proactive, you know, in, <clears throat> in looking up nutritional information, you know, we were getting ready to go to a Mexican restaurant and I knew that they had um, skinny margaritas and skinny drinks. It was one of our favorite local restaurants. And so I was looking up um, some of the ingredients and, and I knew that they had, they had all these skinny drinks, but I, I was curious, you know, I just, I, it was at the beginning of my keto journey and I just was so very much not wanting to be surprised by anything. And so I saw, you know, skinny, skinny margarita, skinny this made with agave syrup. And I looked it up and agave syrup is actually, I'm going to look this up on my computer while I'm here because agave syrup, I just remember this is very high carb. And that's why I remembered thinking, um, so for every teaspoon, teaspoon, not tablespoon. Um, so for every teaspoon, no, no, you're never going to have a quarter of a cup. Well, I don't think you'd have a quarter, but anyway, a teaspoon has five grams of carbs in it. So I would say on average, I'm guessing your average drink might have, four, I would say four, four teaspoons. I'm just guessing. Um, at least, at least two, if not three to four, that's 20 carbs. And, and, um, let me look here. Agave is the name for the group of succulent plants, blah, blah, blah. 
Some people use blue agave as a sweetener. However, it is high in carbohydrates. The plant, the agave plant is, produces a, high, a nectar containing large amounts of sugar called fructose. So in other words, um, agave is definitely used in a lot of skinny, um, skinny sweeteners, um, or excuse me, skinny cocktails, mocktails, whatever. So that was one of the things I learned right up front. And I was like, wow, I can't just go to a restaurant and order a skinny drink and assume that it's okay. Incidentally too, this doesn't have to do with alcohol, but this is one of the things that you will learn and, and don't be discouraged by this. This is just, it, as long as you can learn to look things up, this is how you get to enjoy keto just by becoming aware. Because if you find out what you can't have, then you can find out what you can have. And you make, you, you just, it's all about kind of like rearranging the furniture. Okay, I can't have that but I can have this and I can, you know, if I, if I want to have this, I just got to make room for it earlier in the day. Right. I'll get to, I'll get to that later. It's just that that's, that's actually going to be more of a macro discussion. I'll do a different video about that. Um, how you can, you know, manipulate your foods so that you can make room for, you know, manipulating your macros so that you have room for things like, um, you know, higher carb days, lower carb days and stuff like that today. Let's just focus on alcohol. Um, so, the agave thing was something I learned uh, up front. So that is something that you definitely want to be aware of. You can't just go out to a restaurant and order a skinny cocktail. It's almost like this, the premise of, um, you know, knowing that if you, if you go and you order, <laughs> not order, you buy low fat Oreos or skinny Oreos or whatever. It's really just they've taken the fat out of Oreos and added more sugar. I mean, they're really most, most cookies and, and cakes and things that, you know, cause when the low fat craze was in, they took out all the fat and they just added more sugar because they had to add more flavor in. They're just about the same calories and they taste exactly the same, but they've just, you know, and it's just like, just eat the regular Oreo. I'm not telling you to eat Oreos. We don't eat Oreos on keto. So, but, Back to what I was saying about sweeteners. It was funny because um, I am now in the process or uh, of, of adding in high carb days. I've been on keto. I've pretty much hit my weight loss. I'm, I'm pretty much where I wanna be at, at, for weight loss. I, I would say I wanna lose maybe another five to seven pounds just to get off um, you know, some of the last belly fat um, but I would also be fine if I stayed right where I, I was the rest of my life. I'm very happy with where my body is. Um, and so I was getting ready on one of my high carb days to make an acai bowl. I hadn't had an acai bowl in a year, but I didn't want to make it the way I used to make it with honey. We used to put a lot of honey in it. And so I was pulling out this sweetener that I had heard about from, um, back in my blog days you know, these bloggers were like, well, this is what you use instead of, you know, it's a, it's a better sh sweetener than sugar. Right. And I knew that I had it up in my cabin and I pulled it out and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to use this sugar alternative sweetener. It's going to be awesome. And I turn it around and it has 30 grams of carbs every serving. I'm like, WTH, like what? Be very careful when you're looking at sugary, sugar alternatives. Now, then there's things like allulose and, and then there's sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols can be great. Sugar alcohols in excess can give you a stomach ache. So just be careful. Um, now, here's the good news. Um, you can drink wine. Most people love wine, right? Beer is not gonna be great for you on keto. You, I'm just gonna tell you, for the most part. Now, also Google is your friend. If, you, if you're not smart enough and, and savvy enough to spend some time figuring out, like you can go to Google just like I did, just like anybody can and go, um, what are the best low carb beers? Are there any low carb beers that are keto friendly? You can do that just like I can. <laughs> and when I started keto, that's what I did. What you know, what are the best white wines that are low carb? And that's what I did. I looked up, um, what's the carb count in every white wine. Now for me, 
I tend to drink white wine because red wine, for some reason, just my issues. I'm, I'm very prone to headaches. Um, red wine tends to give me a headache right away. So, so just know that I, I, I tend to drink white wine more than red wine. But what I do know is, um, and I, I did pull this up just so that I could share with you, and I learned something. Um, champagne is also very low carb. Who would have known? I would not have thought that. I did not know that. I did not learn that until today. Um, I'm reading from this, from, from my Google page. <laughs> Given champagne's sweet taste and added sugars, you may think it's a high carb wine. However, a five ounce serving generally provides three to four grams of carbs with only 1.5 grams of sugar. I think I'll be drinking some more champagne. Time to celebrate, you guys. So um, I typically order... Um, I feel really stupid. <laughs> oh, I typically order Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay. Um, now, the other white wines that, that are, t that are uh, keto friendly, Pinot Grigio and Riesling, those are gonna be your, your drier, less sweet. Um, the wines that you wanna stay away from uh, on the white are gonna be, you know, as you move down the road to um, Prosecco, um, anything that's, um, you know, sweeter, the sweeter that you get, the one, those are the ones you want to stay away from. Um, with red wine, uh, Pinot Noir, Merlot, and Cab's, Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow, I didn't know. Now the difference between, here's the funny thing. The difference between Pinot Noir, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon is um, 3.4 grams of carbs for Pinot Noir, uh, Merlot 3.7, Cabernet, 3.8. So we're talking about a difference of 0.4. Um, not that much of a difference. But for me, you know, the most that I would probably have in one night out is two glasses of wine. I'm, uh, a, I'm not, I, I'm very, I'm a lightweight. Um, doesn't take much to get me extremely buzzed. But that is what's good to know about wine. Um, you can really have some, some good um, low carb options with wine. Number two is hard alcohol. Um, your basic hard alcohol, um, vodka, gin, tequila, rum, and the rum surprised me. I just looked that up recently and, and when rum came up, I, I was surprised because I did not think, I thought rum was not in there, but all of those are zero carbs. So if you were to just order those with like a diet soda or a diet or, or a mixer that didn't have any sugar or carbs, you'd be good. Here's something that a client of mine, a customer of mine told me. And ever since she told me this, I was like, and I, yes, and I actually pack it with me. So right now I'm drinking my exogenous ketones. My customer, Michelle, wrote to me and said, do you know what's really great? Vodka mixed with ketones. And I'm like, what? She's like, take the lime, lime thyme, and mix it with vodka or mix it with gin or mix it with this tequila. And I'm like, wait, are you kidding me? So you make up a batch, a, a, you know, a glass of your exogenous ketones, which are going to put you in ketosis, which are good for you. I mean, exogenous ketones, go watch my video on that. I'll link it up below. I mean, Everybody should be drinking exogenous ketones and drinking them two times a day. It's going to quash your appetite. It's going to curb your cravings. It's going to help you with your energy. It's going to be fantastic for your digestion. It's going to be great for your brain. It has so many long-term health benefits. Everybody should be on exogenous ketones, even if you're not keto. But the fact that you can then use it as a low-carb mixer with your alcohol, bam. Okay, that's all there is to it. I mean, that's just... That's like the best thing ever. So we've talked about wine. We've talked about the, the fact that you can do hard alcohol um, with a, something like a diet soda or, you know, but that's where you've got to be careful. Like if you ordered a, a, like a, a, a gin and soda, the soda is going to have sugar. Gin and diet soda is, is not going to have sugar. So just, you know, be careful. Um, you don't want to order like a gin and juice. The juice is going to have a crap ton of sugar. So you, you just want to look this stuff up. And if you're completely not familiar with things and you're, you're, you're completely new to keto, look this stuff up. Like for me, I, 
I know something, any juice, you do not want to be ordering a drink with any kind of juice. Any frozen drinks, you want to stay away from. That's something you definitely want to stay away from. Any kind of, um, like the kind of drinks that I used to have, like blueberry cucumber martini, pomegranate martinis, anything that's got a flavor like that, you're going to want to stay away from. Dirty martinis? all day long. I drink, I drink those all day long. Those are good for you. And if you don't love dirty martinis, learn to love them. Um, I drink, um, Bloody Marys. Absolutely. Now, does the Bloody Mary mix have some carbs in it? Absolutely. But to me, here's, here's the good thing. When you do keto the way that I teach you, and I teach this, in a five-day online boot camp for women, linked down below. But you can also just tune into my videos and, and learn from me as, as well and kind of pick up a, a few of these hints and, and whatnot. You can also um, buy my cookbook. You can buy, pick up my free Keto Quick Start Guide down below. Um, and, you know, what you need to know is... Sorry, there was like a bug. <laughs> Um, if you're doing keto the right way, the way that I teach it, and you're not, you're not eating all of, you're not going down the, the net carb, that's just nonsense. You're not eating a bunch of fake foods. That's when you don't have to worry as much about, and, and that's what I like. I like the fact that I can go out when, when we're going to go out for date night and I don't have to worry about like, oh my God, there's carbs in this, you know, tomato juice that's in this cocktail because I'm so overwhelmingly low on my carbs in, in my keto lifestyle that it's okay. Like when we go out for steak and I order a loaded baked potato, I, I know about the amount of that loaded baked potato that I can have and I have it with everything on it. I have it with butter, sour cream, cheese, bacon everything. And I don't have to like bring my scale and measure it because again, I'm not snacking. I'm not eating fake foods. I'm not having a crap. I'm not filling myself up with carbs all day. And so then when I do want to have the carbs, I don't have to go, Oh, am I pushing myself over my 50 grams of carbs for the day? I'm, I'm able to do it and not have to worry about it. And I will tell you, this has carried me through for a year. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds. I've kept it off. I've never, the scale's never gone back up. I've never taken five steps back. I've been able to drink alcohol the whole time that I've been keto. I've been able to go on vacation and drink every single night on vacation and still lose weight. It is doable to drink on keto, absolutely. If you just get creative, if you, if you have a certain drink that you want, again, if you're a beer drinker, it's a little harder for you. I'm sure that there are some keto beers out there that I haven't looked up. I'm not really a beer drinker anymore. So look that up. Google is your best friend, but there is plenty of choice for you out there. Plenty of options, particularly if you're making stuff at home. But you know, like I said, I even will take my my ketones with me. I don't make it beforehand. I bring my little packet of ketones and I, you could order this for me. I'll put my shop down below. Um, I bring my, my little packet of ketones with me and then I ask the bartender for a glass. I pour it in there, I mix it up and then I order my shot of tequila or gin and I mix it up. And usually people at the bar are like asking me what that is and then sometimes they order for me. So it's actually a good business generator, but hey, I'm sticking to my diet and this is how I lost weight. This is how, uh, you know, I got down to like a size four, six from a size 10, 12. Don't you want that? I think so. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Leave them in the question, in the comments down below. Excuse me. Um, let me know anything that I can answer as far as alcohol. But again, Google is going to be your best friend. Always look things up, before, especially before you go out to a restaurant, just so that you can be in the know. And um, I hope this gets you excited so that you know you can enjoy adult beverages on keto. We all need that. 
that little something something to take the edge off especially when it's been a tough day so i hope this was helpful thanks you guys so much i'll see you next time on the kelly o show hey guys i hope this video was helpful for you and i hope it got you excited if you thought before that you couldn't drink on keto now you know and of course i'm going to link up here our keto playlist with a ton of videos on keto that hopefully will help you uh, explore the keto lifestyle a little bit more